What do you mean, maybe? What up, what up, what up? Welcome to the show. It's Blue 5 1 here at the barbershop, the barbershop guy. We'll go through, say what up to everybody, and then we're going to uh, start the show for the two topics that we got today, right? <clears throat> say to my girl, Kathy, because you know, I love Kathy. Gotta say hi to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, baby. That's my Kathy. You gotta say what up to my man Monty, you know, Monty Mon right here. Don't ever forget, don't ever forget. Don't ever forget Monty. Don't y'all ever forget that Monty one of the coolest dudes in the shop. Don't you don't y'all ever forget that. Y'all remember? Yeah, I'm trying to be like Monty when I grow up. Say what up to that Phil. You know what I'm saying? C Moss. Say what up, Kev. What up, hey, hey everybody? Um I'm Say what up, Jones. say what up, Kev. There you go. And I, I want everybody to um, look at these feet. And um, I want to I want to ask do do men wear thongs? Yes. Hey, you ain't asked them what's up. Ask them what's ask up. Ask them what's up. I did. We had the no, whole no, no, hour. No, no. We had a whole we had a whole hour. We had a whole Hold on, we had a whole hour last Friday. So, so y'all come for the African, sneakers. African, Here we go. African men wear those. I don't American give a, men I don't wear give, those. Look, they, they are a new character on this show. This is, this, my, this is my favorite. This is my favorite American thing, right? Man, this is my favorite thing. The only reason I'm wearing these sandals today American, is because the only reason the only reason I'm the only reason I'm wearing these sandals today is because last time I wore these sandals, they gave me shit. They gave me shit for an hour. And now now and now here we go again. Again, with the, with the shit talking American about my sandals. Again, I want you to know there's nothing you can say to make me not wear these sandals to this barbershop on Friday. Next you know Friday, they will come out again. People, the only thing going to change America, is it. The only thing going to change oh, because the only thing going to change. America, hey, man, hey, America, get off my goddamn America, America, that is sad, America. Hey, sad, the only America. thing going to change is my toes because my man Sean gave me a whole rundown about toe maintenance. Oh, yeah, then he, then he, so I'm a, so I'm going to. The only thing going to change is toe maintenance. Because we got thong sandals with no Only because I like the way. But I don't care. Toes are not bad. I, I, I don't. But like, he can at least get it. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. No, 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 no. Sean, Sean made it. No, no, literally. Sean, literally. Sean, Sean hold on, hold on, hold on, Sean, hold on. She didn't need that part. She didn't need that part, Sean. She didn't need that part. She just need you to be like, yo, all right, cool. You gonna look at me and be like, look, I looked out for you. Call that day, but no, I feel like I feel like the the amount, the amount, the amount of animosity for my flip flops is crazy. But guess what? They not stopping, boy. We in here Blue. every Friday. Flip flops on feet. It's not stopping, bro. They can't stop us. We Blue, wear flip flops every Friday. So got, they every Friday. Up. They, they stand with me. Up. They stand with me. The only Just thing like changing is the toes. What's well, show them? Show them. So they ain't gotta say what I know because show it, show it, you're the only one that's making it a big well, deal. Well, show, I'm not. Show, show they just on my feet. Actually, no. You just left Kenya. Just you two. He asked me because y'all talking That's about That's what Kenyan men wear because they don't have slides. Yo, where you been at, George? I see you forever. What's up, Cuzzo? But they're well moisture. Y'all talking about hair, he's the moisturizer. Oh, no, no, in Kenya, they don't say about moisture. They say they moisturize. They got yeah. the shea butter. So, hold on, so, you just, if you just tuned in, well, we just tuned in, Kev, Kevin, Sean, haven't, well, it's not really Sean. I say, I keep saying Sean. It's just Kev. Kev has an issue with me and flip flops, so we got to make a big deal about my flip flops. So, what he's saying is that basically, what he's saying is, me wearing flip flop sandals is gay. That's like the premise we're going to be pushing for. That's what we're pushing for. No, she said. That. No, 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 but you, no, no, but what you said is that no man wears them. No, we don't. that's the same thing as saying it's with bitches. White men wear those. I said white men. White men with them. I didn't say black men didn't, but so you a sellout. You so a sellout. So now, yeah, everything, everything you say gets translated. There's nothing you can say. <laughs> he said, yeah, white men wear that. He a sellout, man. He a Uncle Tom. He a Uncle Tom. He a Uncle Tom. White men wear sandals. He a Uncle Tom. My man men, men, men in America don't wear them. He gay. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no way around it. All right, so Nicole, no matter what happened, if you was out, George, and no matter he, what happened, and he approached you and he had them on, I yes. book you. What, what would you say? I still book you. It depends on where we at. It depends on where we at. No, you was at Jackson. It depends on where we was at. Are you and he, and the outdoor? And look, and he came on. He on came the outdoor? And this all year. This all year. Pop, flop, pop, flop, pop, flop. Come on. He got to go get the money and come back. He didn't bring the car or nothing. All right, that's cool. What's your name? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I wouldn't mind. Uh, most of, that's because you've been in Kenya. Uh, no, 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 it's because you're a grown ass woman. You, like, and, oh, and she was married to so a white hold on. Man, so. So, so hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. She said, hold on. Did you hear what she said? Did you hear what she said? She said he didn't wear those. He didn't wear those. 
So what? Huh? But I think so. You have a problem. I'm not trying to be her. So, all right, so, 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 I don't have a. The so, big so, deal is so, I don't have a problem so with. If, 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 it's, it's, it's your, your man's birthday. That's yeah. that's yeah. hypothetically. Yeah. Blue, blue is your man. Yeah. Yeah. We supposed to be talking about oh, relationships. No, 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 we supposed to be talking about relationships. We're talking about relationships. Relationship. Yeah. Talking about relationships yeah. and breaking need up. Some sandals. Yeah. You go to the store. Are you getting those? See, this is the thing. Well, what am I supposed to get? Those other sandals that black men wear? Because that's not it either. No, slides. Who cares? No, no. What, what, difference does it, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? I grew up in Fairfax County. This is what we did. See, well, no, no. What difference does it make? If I wear slides or flip flops, you got a thong. What's the difference? Huh? Hey, come check this out. You got thongs. What's the difference? What does that matter? No, no, it's, it's just, it literally is just the clouding and it doesn't make any sense to me. We're, we're taking a, we're taking a, a toll right now, a, a, a toll, a poll right now. She's, uh, Kev wants me to do a poll of do men wear thong sandals? Do men wear them? Do men, the men wear sandals like this? That's what he wants me to take a, to a poll on. Why? I don't know. Other than that, I think he wants to call me gay. <laughs> As other than he wants to call me gay, I have no idea why he wants to why he wants me to take the survey. But Kev's really hell, he's on he's on his uh he's on his crusade to can to cancel the sandals and I'm not going for it. Well I mean technically we need as many we need as many stretch along the line. So you wanna do it today or whenever? What was the first one? Oh, oh, stay at home, dads. Yeah, I'm in a business meeting. There is no shame in being a stay at home dad in 2023. If a woman can do it, so can a man. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Let me get to the grid. Let me go ask the real question I was trying to have. Monty, can can uh can a man can a man be a, is how do you feel about a man being a stay at home dad? Is that still masculine? Being a stay-at-home dad masculine? Yeah, because he can work from home and be a stay-at-home dad. Okay, does he have to be the primary breadwinner? Depends on their goal. I mean, I'm kind of old. Do you think it's masculine is what I asked you, though. If a man stays at home and he's the, the primary caretaker for the children or the child, is that still masculine to you? Do you perceive that as masculine or feminine? Well, I'm old school. I'm old fashioned, so I would see that as kind of feminine a little bit. Being that things kind of change, I mean, he could probably get away with it. Get away with it, you know. If he want to get under the radar, you know what I mean. He could like work out. He could like lift weights while he's home. Yo, Monty, horrible. Monty, Monty said he could probably get away with it, but yo, it's being a. No, no. Let me ask. Let me ask Phil. Phil, is being a stay-at-home dad masculine? Blue. She said, "What's the question? You being a real man?" I'm. I'm. I'm taking Phil's. I'm being a second. Damn, walking my way down. You real aggressive right now. You need to chill out. When you got little flabby arms like that, you can't talk to me. Like you could do something. Hey, you used to have a gun there. You can see it's gun residue, but ain't no gun on there. Ain't no gun over there no more. <laughs> you can, you know, went off a couple of times. And it <laughs> you popped that joint. <laughs> you, you popped that joint one time. It's gonna fall to pieces. You better leave that. You remember? Look remember? I'm gonna get you well, sucker. Was it? Was it? Was it? I'm gonna get you. No, it wasn't. It was the uh, Harlem. It was Harlem Nights. Oh, way, ow, but ow. he was like. <laughs> And then, wow. <laughs> he's like, stop shooting that little motherfucker. Right, well, well, look at these little 22 uh, bullets down here. Well, they, oh, they ain't sitting about. What, 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 what is this? All right, so now what? You, um, think, the Nicole. Nicole. <laughs> you, think, you, you think the phone going to laugh? You think the phone going to laugh? He walked up to you. You're in the same place. place. You're in the same place, yeah. And he walked up to you and he got that, he got that on. That's his style. What you going to say? He got two different shoes on because he, he's styling them. Hold on, hold on. So, dude, hold on. Hold on. Let me say something, right? Hold on. Let me say something. Let me say something. So a man coming to you, right? He look about 90 years old and his shoes are two different shoes, right? He got two different shoes on his feet. He comes to you. He look about 90 years old and he got two different shoes on his feet. What do you think? You think the nigga fly? You think the nigga got got cataracts or something going on? And he can't. What do you think? I, I'm not going to make fun. Yeah, of don't that. Make fun of right, it. So don't make fun of it. No, 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 no. At least my sandals match. Hold on, let's do this. 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 Let
Let's do this. Flip, fl- give me, you, give me your you phone. Stop flip flopping colors. I just got on flip flops. Okay, give me, give me your shoes. phone, and I'm gonna watch you walk. And then I want to hear the people. I want them to hear the, your, your, the, the slap. First off, give my shoes don't clap. Yes, they I'm do. I'm not giving you. Keep trying to take my phone. You not. You not getting the phone. I'm a you not you. getting the phone. They follow me all day. Me they be on me all day. Stop reaching on my phone. Somebody tried to take his phone. He don't remember. I, I remember. He don't remember. You better remember. Sean got me once. I gave him the phone one time. He ain't never getting no, the phone again. I just want to. <laughs> he ain't never getting his phone. Sean got me one time. He's like, he's he's the phone. He's like boop, 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 boop. Nah, never I again. I just want him to hear how he sound when he walk. I I don't hear myself walk. You not get. Oh, let me watch. Get the camera slap and say, get your hand out of here. Get your, get your hand out of here. You not getting no phone. I want to make sure they see that. Let me ask the question, damn it. Right, ask the question. Ask the so question. The question is, is a stay-at-home dad still, is, is it, wait, is a stay-at-home dad still masculine? Because most, I guess, not, I guess, I watched this clip where a man said, the first thing he said, he got in front of the group, it was a, a conversation of, I think it's about tonight's conversation. It was one of those uh, podcast joints. I love that, 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 uh, I love that content because it's so cool and interesting. I just like it. So uh, the guy gets on, the first thing he says in a group of men and women, he goes, so I want to be a stay-at-home dad. And all the women in the crowd laugh. Right? And, he, and they go, like, yo, let that man talk, let that man talk. He was like, listen, I served 32 tours for my country. Um, I, wrote a, I wrote a couple of books. They, they sell great. So I got a bunch of residual income that comes in from my book, my book sales. I'm set. He goes, I don't like traffic. I don't like people. I want to spend time with my kids because I've been out and overseas for so long. I want to be with my children and be a part of their lives. So I want to stay home. So everybody starts clapping. So he was like, so they can laugh what they want, but I'm done being out there. I'm done with all that shit. I just want to be home with my kids and be a part of their lives. So then they started clapping. And I was like, that's fucking, that's funny as shit. But their initial response was to laugh at him, right? For wanting to stay home, be with his kid. I also, I have my daughter, we have this 50-50 arrangement, but even like if it was full-time, I adjusted my schedule so I can take her to school and pick her up from school. So it's going to be part of her morning and part of her after, right? So I can do homework, so I can do dinners, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to work, so half my schedule, I don't do nothing outside of her school time, right? And then the other half of my schedule, I work all day. But is a stay, being a stay-at-home dad, being a full-time dad, is that less masculine to you? When you present it in that way, he's done all the 26 tours. Not him. I should say the idea. The reason why I'm asking the question is because of him. Clearly, his, his, uh, what he's done is like he's earned the right, but why did he got to earn the right to be a stay at home dad? This is a bit conflicting for me. I do think, I don't think it's masculine. I think, um, I think men kind of operate better outside of the home. However, it's also expected that they part- fully participate just as a woman would inside of the home. Now, do you hear you hear you hear what you just said? Yeah, yeah. You just you just but, said it's but, better outside, but they need to fully participate in yeah, the home. We women work and we still have to be fully engaged at home and at work. You want so, somebody to blow your mind? Sean like, sh- sh- gonna we'll, like this. Yeah, when a woman don't got a man, right? When a woman don't got a man. She has to match. She becomes more masculine. She takes on more masculine things. But when a man doesn't have a woman, he doesn't feminize. He doesn't get more feminine. A man doesn't have a woman. He doesn't become more feminine to make up for it. So would it? So would it? So would it be safe to say that masculinity is necessary for survival? All right, four hundred. Mind blown, right? Um, <laughs> that shit blew my. It blew my mind. Oh, that's for crazy. I think women usually do have to become more masculine because men don't Derek. some men don't mm-hmm. often step up to the plate a woman is only going to follow or allow a masculine man that she trusts oh. to lead her but men don't become more feminine when they don't have a woman but women tend to become more masculine when they don't have a man but because they don't step up to their step up so in when a you, way that is kind of, they fall when, back in when a you, way that is fizzled. When you step up to masculine women, I feel like a guy doesn't want to date a guy. When you put out more masculine no, energy. Not, not, when, when you say step up. Do you feel like dating a guy if a woman is masculine? I don't that's what masculine. The, that's what the, that's acting like a man per se. Nah, Sean. But more like you want to put 200 down not needing anything from anyone. I feel like, I feel like, uh, we're having, a, we're having the conversation about, uh, 
is it, it about uh, we'll not have a conversation I thought it was cool because of the idea she about masculinity being necessary so right we're also having two conversations that, at the same time like so it's so like it's tough but like I was, what I was gonna say what I was gonna say was women that women that are by themselves have to become more masculine I'm not disagreeing with that I think it's a necessity but I'm saying is that uh you said and then you said men don't step up to the plate afterwards but that's more Order well, you also you said that men function better out of the household, right? So I'm talking about the things that men typically take on. For men, for men to feel like men, do men feel like they're being men? If they're in the home. I'm not going to um, go or do they feel like men when they're providing? You want that's the light, at least what they're selling. In the but you, world. but you I think, I think, I think, uh, I think provision. I think, I think providing for your family depends on. Well, I think all relationships come down to the people that are in them, right? That's my belief in general, right? But we had to generalize, right? I think the nature of men is to protect and serve. So in order to serve, you have to have the necessary things to provide what you're giving your family. So I think that those things are in the nature. Nature of men. I think nurturing children in, are in the nature of women. Does every woman want to nurture? No. But it's in the nature of women to nurture children, to breastfeed children, to birth the child. You know what I'm saying? To have that extra connection because you carry them around for X amount of months. So I think the nature of man is to be a provider. How that man soothes that provisionary sense, like that, that primal sense of providing, if staying home is the way he does it, I think that's odd for a man. But I think a man wanting to stay home. I think with the way it is outside now, which you have to, if you're not home because you're working, they want you to spend more time with your kids. If you're home because you're not working, they need you to get outside and get a job. There's a lot of things that weigh on men. I'm not saying that they're saying that directly. I think society puts that pressure on you. Also, can't cry. You can't. You can't have. You can't have emotional breakdowns. Um, if your relationship okay. fails, it's your fault. If your relationship works out it's because you need to make sure you're doing your best. There's a lot of things that are unspoken and are socially placed on men. I'm not saying women say it specifically, but I mean, there's a reason why our suicide rates are as high as they are. Being, why can't men cry? I can't order for my Do men say that as well? Why not? Socially, it's not acceptable. Every man that's ever cried online, look at what they've done to him, Tyrese. Michael okay. Jordan is still a meme for crying I, 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 online. Any man that's cried on, any specifically black men, but any man that's cried online. Oh, well, that's to, but society, not just you. Society makes it where like any emotion outside of anger coming out of a black man particularly, but any emotion outside of anger is seen as not masculine. I can do that. I can do that. Give me, let me come back. Let me come back because this, this, this is getting to the nitty gritty. I want we not so like. My bad, y'all. I didn't realize that I was having a conversation with the conversation on top of a conversation, wrapped inside of a conversation at the time of a conversation. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's a lot going on over there. I had to walk away. I was right in the middle of it. I was trying to talk to him more. I wanted to, I was getting to the good conversation. Now nah, I was talking to the child. I was talking, now I'm talking to you. I was trying to see into the good part, man. I had a woman talking to me about masculinity and all right, man, good one. It's a great conversation. It's all going now. Hey, Phil. What's up, bro? You good? Phil, let me ask you a question. Bro. What day is it? It's Friday. What are we doing on Fridays? Barbershop Friday. Barbershop Friday. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? So your question was? That's it. It's your Bama. I'm a Bama. It's fucked up, Phil. And I thought you was my man's. Hey, man, let's talk shit about Phil. Man, let's talk shit about Phil. Phil got a weird shaped head, don't he? <laughs> he left. He went out there to shave his head up. He got a rock head. Yeah, yeah. You tell him I said it when he get back. He got an old head. He said it should look weathered. <laughs> you can tell. You can tell he got some miles. I love. Uh, I, I love I love this conversation they having right now. Uh, I, lo I love what you call it. I love listening to the conversation. You know what makes me uncomfortable, Sean? 
The fact that when you were like, I'm just uncomfortable with that, just come back and I'll do that, that he kept on rebuttaling, <laughs> it's, a, it's very uncomfortable. Like, why, why, I, don't, I don't understand, like, you can't come in here and just try to I don't think it's swizzle. I think it's just that's bad. A, a cold it's bad. That's a it's bad. It's bad business. Which, yeah, I guess it is swizzle. I just think it's funny because, I right, so I do personal training, right? And I make everybody pay for the month. People pay me for a month of training up front, but the initial consultation, like the initial meetup, the first one, you still got to pay for it in advance to secure the time. So I send over a training agreement, which is contractual. You pay for the time up front, and then I meet up with you and I go. But most of my people are word of mouth, too, though. Like, right, but well, there's a track record. Like, if there's somebody who's like, yo, I got a guy. And somebody was like, yo, uh, this guy just did likes for me. Like, trying to check him out. Like, you you just told me, hey, somebody just did, just did likes for me, yo. Like, he's the baby. Yeah. Like, yo, we don't, no, nobody can vouch for this dude. Like, we don't know this dude. Yeah, that's wild. You know what I mean? And it's like, he might be telling the truth, but I'm not like, you know. Well, we do that with the closets. I've been here too much. I've been down this line too much. I ain't doing that. We've both been stay-at-home since the Rona hit. All right, so that you don't think it's less masculine to be a stay-at-home dad, Jim? I want to ask you. We were kind of having a whole conversation, but you guys are having a conversation, so I rolled out. But do you think it's less masculine for a man, it's seen as less masculine for a man to be a stay-at-home dad? It's not necessarily that part. It's everything that comes with it. So now, do does that man have to ask for permission to get money or get permission to for certain other things? Does he have an allowance like does that? Stay, that does stay at home. That does that, stay at home is, mom have that? She does. You you get allowance, right? Allowance. Did you or did you not? Oh, no, what do you call it? An allowance? Okay, but you got you got a budget. <laughs> what do you, you call it? What you want to call it? Do you know how many? Do you know how many? She said, she said, boom, he said, not at all. No, but do you know how much? Do you feel emasculated when somebody gives you a budget? No. Would you feel emasculated if somebody gave you a budget in your home? Either one. If my, if, no, I'm be honest with you, I'm keeping a buck, right? I'm keeping a buck. My girls make it six figures, right? And that's enough for us to have not just a regular house, but a thriving. Like, we all do. We're not struggling. We're not uh-huh. just getting by. And she's like, can you stay home with the kid? I got a six-figure income. Can you help? Like, can you be the primary home care person? I'd be home, but I would definitely be doing something to put money in my pocket. So I wouldn't have to do things like say, hey, baby, yeah. can I have X amount of dollars per month to go do my own? I would feel I would not feel very manly right having on. to ask my girl. But not, in the, not in the sense of my relationship, but in the sense of, like, lifestyle. I did. I I feel like being an adult man. Part of that is having your own money. I feel like that, that's part of being an adult man for but, me. But I think when you're if it, if it, if it's a marriage or even a serious relationship, isn't that conversation had beforehand about money? Because they said it's one of the first things you should have in a relationship. Yeah, because, this conversation about money. Yes, I was a stay-at-home mom, and my ex-husband worked. But however. But, it was never made, and it was never made to seem like I was on a budget and had to ask for an it, allowance. It was our money. It doesn't, like it doesn't, but that much. part, all that part sounds good and don't matter. The point is, after all of that, you feel emasculated. That is the, you feel emasculated from that. Exactly. How do you no. feel emasculated? There's nothing for you to man up about. Mm. Exactly, because you're a woman. Thank you. So Thank you. Hey, I, it just leads me back to my regular thing that when women don't got men, they need to be more masculine. And the answer he gave me didn't make sense. He was like, he, he, oh. uh, he gave people uh, the business. Uh, business is crazy. Jim Jim said money doesn't equal masculinity. Money doesn't. Money doesn't. Money doesn't equal masculinity. You come back with the work, you know what I mean? We're gonna find our own life. Jim said money doesn't equal masculinity. No, I don't, it doesn't. I, I don't think that's what he's saying. It equals the fact that you can provide something. You can provide water, housing, something, protection. Like it goes back into the nature of man. I was that's what I was t- explaining that. Well, I was articulating to her. I won't say explaining because I still. So. I'm still grasping these concepts thoroughly, right? Like, I kind of innately feel like this is masculine, this is feminine, this is where the area or the space for men, this is the area or space for women. Um, But also, relationships are dynamic, and how those two people work, being that there's no, like, solid lines, it's very dynamic for the people that are in it, right? Um, But I do have my own preconceived notions about men and women. So when I say the nature of man, I feel like that's just... 
whether you whether that comes like when I was saying that women tend to masculate for survival, right? When they don't have men around, they tend to take on socially masculine traits, right? And that men typically do not take on feminine traits when they do not have a woman. A man in 38 doesn't start doing more feminine things. What's they a feminine trait? Um, they don't take on, uh, I guess they. I would say that they don't get a... Uh... Yeah, it's hard, right? How do I explain? I'm trying to think of like a guy. I don't know any dudes that are doing stuff like that. Like, I mean like... Uh, like what? Just softer, like it's a more. Uh, like, do they cook for themselves? That's not. That's nah, not not cooking, because that's ridiculous. That's right, a, that's right, a survival right. thing. Right. I mean, like. Uh, Cleaning for themselves. I want to be. Like, I want to be like. Um, nah, there's no. There's no good way to say it. Cause I feel like if my boy was like overwhelmed with life, right? I don't think that's particularly feminine, it's right? I don't feel like that. I don't feel like it's. I don't feel like that's feminizing. Like in my head, in my head, in my head, I feel like to me a man that's feminine that's becoming more feminine is a guy who's starting to buckle, right? I also feel like this is a very black American issue because, like in Africa, mm. masculinity is not connected to money because there are plenty of African men who, let's say, are. I mean, the average person in Kenya makes 400 US dollars a month. That's two, that's a two, that's a man and a woman. That's a husband and a wife, whatever. $400 a month. If that man, even if that man has no job, he is still very much the head of household. Um, there, if you have a little money, the only way masculinity is connected to money there is if you're going because you're allowed to have more than one spouse. So if you're going to have more than one spouse, then you have to be able to put that woman in a different house from your first spouse. You can have as many women as you want, so long as you can provide a house and land for that woman and that family. So masculinity is a bit different there um, than it is here. I think here we try to connect it more with like, he got, he got to do his thing. He can't mess around. Yeah, I know. I mean, so, um, <laughs> so I think a lot of the masculinity issues really are black American men. Well, one of the value wins, one of the value wounds of black men is provision, being able to provide. That's like something that mm-hmm. yes. that, that mm-hmm. was given, like was it was we we acquired yeah. by being yeah. here forcibly, being yeah. beat down. Like by, like uh, women have black women have their uh, their parents, mm-hmm. and black men typically have how much how their money, their masculinity, and their money. Like we yeah. have that's something we like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, being yeah. broke that's or really not being a man. Know. Is a really deep that, cut for us. Yeah, that's that's why it's one of the things that people shoot for when they're having their breakdown. And then he, you, you're a bitch. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the masculinity oh, and the way, and, and you broke. That's why these sandal conversations is funny to me because it's like I don't, it don't make me us of a man because I got thong sandals. But for these dudes, they like, yo, you don't wear that. That's not what men do. And I'm like, my feet just need something underneath them, bro. I'd wear two pieces of car. I wear socks if I could not hurt my foot on a rock. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not tripping. I just need something on my foot when I go outside. But anyway, I think, it, I, think I think black women make um, a lot of issues um, for for one another when it comes to masculinity. Again, in Africa, Kenya specifically, men wear whatever pink, pink. I mean, some men wear shirts that say queen on them. And of course, in Africa, it's extremely homophobic. So there's wearing a shirt that says. They just don't care. It's like they don't define themselves when it comes to masculinity in the same way that black men here define themselves. Well, it's more complex here. I feel like they they they, cannot, they did their thing where they made it simple. It's very complex here. Well, here because well, masculinity was masculine. That's what he said. Yeah, it's all it's over here. You can. <laughs> Hold on. What? <laughs> I want y'all to know at the barbershop here, we like to have it. It's for your place. This is my first time. Yeah, you don't be on the show. I never show you on the show. <laughs> yeah. He's 
like, yeah, we'll get you up out of here. There you go. Go be a... Damn, y'all, I missed it on camera. Oh, shit, God. She drunk. She drunk. No. no. Jesus. 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 Ah, she couldn't see because her eye got blown into her head. <laughs> she couldn't see. Her eye got blown in her head. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? It's a good shirt. That's a good shirt. It's a good shirt, man. Yeah. Hey. Strong. Hey, it's a strong, it's a strong, it's a strong shirt. It's a strong shirt. It's a, it's a strong shirt, man. One of your best. I emailed him beforehand. Fuck, what was the other one? Oh, my God. Jim, what's the other joint? Jim Jimmer. What's the other topic? I got the masculinity one. What's the other one? That too, it's just men staying home and then oh, it's the breakup. I'll tell you something. We're meeting in DC. The other topic. I had two to I had two topics listed. I can't remember what the other topic is. I didn't write it down. We started talking about so many different things in here. I forgot what the second one was. I don't know. One Piece? I should kick your ass, Jim. You know it's not One Piece. <laughs> you know it's not One Piece. I saw something where... Uh, I'm watching this anime with my daughter where they said the Wano arc. <laughs> um, I'm not even caught up, man. I'm at Cake Island. But that's another conversation for another pod. I wanted to have more conversation about the uh, oh, intentions and dating. Oh, she left before I got a chance to have a conversation with her about that. That's going to be cool to have a conversation with her about intentions when dating. <laughs> I just got to mute. I don't even know what that is. And then Kev's gone too. Damn, so I lost Sean, lost Kev, lost the girl, lost everybody. Everybody left. The pod's over. That's it. 30 minute podcast. We ain't talk about nothing, Miss Kathy. We ain't talk about nothing. It's just me and Kathy. So, you know, me and Kathy. We work together. Mm -hmm. She works here. I work her nerves. <laughs> <laughs> we both can't eat very buddy you know nose. I mean? That's it. That's how we do it. You know what I mean? That's how we do it. I come in. She smiles. I smile. We good. Every time. Everybody smile, right? Everybody smile. We happy. You know what I mean? I got to go do some manly ass land maintenance on this house and feed the baby, my baby, yo. Yeah, feed your baby, man. Congratulations, yo. Take care of the junior. I like you just got to do some manly ass housework. That's what I'm talking about. It's about stating intentions, but I think we're going to have to skip over because there's nobody here to talk to. It's just me, but uh, I can have the conversation. So the idea was that uh, the I was watching this clip where they were saying, if you're going to have to make your intentions clear that you need to remind the person about your intentions. Like uh, the woman was saying that what she was requiring from the guy was that every time that he was going to sleep, whatever that before you. If she gives her body to him, she's like, you need to let, and this is not an actual thing. She was saying as like a joke or how, a, um, uh, uh, she was saying this as a, you know, in the conversation, she was like, well, then maybe we just all need to state our intention clearly before we do anything. Before we ask, before she sleeps with her dude, she needs to be like, listen, before I give myself to you, I want you to know that I'm looking for a relationship. I'm looking for something seriously, commitment. If you're going to have sex with me, either like, before each stroke, you need to tell me that you want to be with me, you want a relationship, do the da And like, uh, the girl, the guy was like, then before you go and you make that sandwich, before you ask me if I'm good and check on me, say, hey, I'm checking on you because I want to have something serious with you. I want to build with you. State your intentions right away. And I thought that was kind of cool about being direct like that. But do you think that that actually functions well if you're stating your intentions? Out? Like, you know, like, I feel like that kind of, I don't know. I just feel like that's kind of like a turn off. Like, I don't know if that would, that would work. If that would work in an actual, like, relationship. So... I don't know. I'm going to try to have the conversation. I'll get Shorty. I'll talk to Shorty about it. And after that, I'm in the show because for whatever reason, the barbershop mag is dry. I can't talk to Sean no more because he got a client I can't talk to. Because I, I think that, I think you just grow. And you uh -huh. gotta, I think things force you to grow. Okay. And that seems like that was my whole experience overseas. 
everything that happened forced me to to reevaluate myself, situations, and then are you gonna I don't know how he sits on this little ass thing. This shit is hurting my ass cheek. This shit is fucking weird. I'm out. What is this? This little ass, this little ass piece of rock. How you sitting on that, man? I'm used to it, man. Uh, uh, 14 years, shit. baby. Burning this shit out of me, 14 bro. 14 years. I want to ask a question before I go because right. nobody in there talking, so I got to finish up. So the thing was about stating intentions when dating. I watched this clip and this guy was like, uh, the girl was saying, and this is not what the actual situation for her. She was saying, well, we need to be straight up. But then like every every time, every time we having, he, he, uh, we having sex, I, every before every stroke, you remind me that you love me. Tell me that, you know, I'm doing this because I want a relationship before each one. You know, it was like a joke, but she was being mm -hmm. like, how, uh, how intensely to state your intentions. And the guy was like, okay, well, you know what I'm saying? Well, before you check, when you make that phone call to check on, to check on me, make sure you say, hey, I'm checking on you because I want to build a relationship with you. It's because I actually care about you romantically and I want to have a, a serious romantic relationship. I was like, that type of intensity, they were joking around, but like, what's the middle, right? Like, not A, is that too much? And then B, what's the middle ground for it, right? Because I think that like, being honest, the conversation is cool, but shit changed too, right? Like, I feel like in a relationship, you can have this season with people. You can have a, you can be with somebody, stay with that person, and have a season in that relationship where you just don't really fuck with them, but y'all still together. But y'all, you know, doing your own thing, because, not doing your own thing romantically. I'm saying doing your own thing, like building on yourself, taking yeah. classes, taking courses, maybe get back into school. Y'all don't see each other as much because you're working on yourselves. You come back together, like maintaining your own happiness within your relationship and then coming back and being happy with each other because it's seasons, you know what I'm saying? But uh, do you think that stating intentions, A, is it's too much. beneficial? And B, what intensity do you state it in? Like how far, how much do you put into it? I feel like, do you have to state that? I mean, I th I, for me, I think actions say everything. You, if you're going to state anything, I think you should state it in the beginning. What, what are your intentions? Because we all know what they are. Yeah, but everybody's a fucking liar. But be honest. Yeah, well, no, everybody's that, not. That, that's your um, representative in the beginning. And they're not honest. But not necessarily. Outside sucks. Not necessarily. Outside does suck, but not necessarily. If if so, I think it depends on the person. If someone wants to ask me my intention, no names mentioned. What are your intentions? I don't Say the name. Don't be scared. No, 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 no. <laughs> but if someone were to ask me, what are your intentions? I don't know yet. I'm you don't know, to... especially when you like first meet somebody, you don't know your intentions. Right, right. No, so but what are you dating for? Wait, what are you dating for? Because some that's guys, correct. some guys are dating for fun. Some dudes are out here, they just want to enjoy themselves. Hey, look, they look, I'm not, I'm not looking no, for nothing serious. No, so, but they so say it, that. And then girls have, and I run I, I run into this more. I've seen guys run into this more. I've, it's very common for a guy to get with a girl, be like, yo, I'm not really looking for nothing. He gets called a fuck boy for this. But he's like, I'm not really looking for nothing. She like, cool, but you think she's going to fuck him, suck him, or okay. make him a sandwich into a relationship. Then when it don't work out, it's like, yo, well, how long you just trying to fuck around? I thought by now we'd be together. And it's like, yo, I thought you was cool with us not being official and just doing whatever. She's so, like, well, so, that's not what I'm looking for So anymore. let me ask you this, Lou. Have you ever been in a situation not looking for anything? And then when you um, get with her and it's like, oh, you know what? I might can, um, I, I might can chill with her. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, so, you know what I mean? So when you, when you, you don't know what you want when you first, um, when you first get with her. I agree with that. But I'm saying if you say what you want, and someone else doesn't say what they want because they just want you. So they don't say what they want just to get you. It's kind of like the friend zone shit, right? Guys will be your, guys will be a girl's friend. Yes, yes. And be like, she like, I always want to be friends. He like, yo, but I kind of like her. So then he acts like your friend until he can get the, so you know what I get the buns that? later. You know what I call it? And you better not steal this phrase. Cause you, I don't steal no you phrases you from you. My phrase. Phrase. Hey man, ain't no, don't be telling me what to do. Okay. First off, you're trying to you you gonna make us lose phrase. money. So I call that in case of emergency, Break glass. Mm. You better not steal that. I ain't gonna steal it, man. All right, he gonna, hey, Nicole. I'm a witness. He gonna steal it. You, you a witness? Case of emergency. I'm Break glass. Break you, glass. Heard it, you heard it here first. <laughs> Blue 5-1. Blue 5-1. On this thing, day. On this day. I think the one thing that we can all agree on is that initially the only thing you know is that you're attracted, if you're attracted to the person or not. Yes. Right? Yes. So that leads. That's the only thing you know in the beginning is that, yes, I'm Superficially, attracted. yeah. Because, I mean, like, for real, for real, I'm the type of dude where, like, you could just fucking, you could laugh horribly and I'd be like, turn to, I have a yeah, friend, the girl ate a banana sideways. Instead of eating a banana, she turned a banana like a watermelon and ate it. That was it. He just didn't talk to her anymore. Another girl didn't have no soap nowhere. No, that's, that's a different I'm just saying, like, the there's those little shits that just turn you off. Like, yo, she was cool, she was compatible, but she had no soap in her house nowhere, so he just stopped dating her. Yo, I got a story Another girl for that. ate a banana sideways, just ate it sideways, like a watermelon. And how superficial have you been? Look. 
For me? Example, yeah. Um, she got, she drank and got drunk one night, right? And she was so sloppy when she was drunk, I stopped liking her. Like, she was drunk. And I Were never, I don't, I don't, she, she was with me. I don't drink. Why didn't you stop her? Um, Why because did you say, hey, hey. I never experienced that. I never, like, I never experienced that side of her. Yeah, he I knew she, know, he I knew, know. no, like, I mean, even if she does drink, I don't, first off, you're a grown-ass woman, I'm not going to tell you, hey, you need to stop drinking. Uh, do your thing. But she was with you. Right? Once she, no, we were at, I, well, she was with me, but she was there as, uh, in support. Like, I was doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. She was there to support me, but then she became a liability. Now I got to look out for somebody <laughs> at my own right. situation. At right. my night, as a, as a sober, first off, even if you drink, if you sober and your friend drunk, they're annoying. Unless you signed on to be like, out. And I, I don't drink at all. So, like, now the girl that I'm trying, like, and I don't mess with drunk girls. Like, when you drunk, I'm not even going to do nothing with you, uh -huh. right? Fr girlfriend or not, like, you yeah. drunk, I'm not doing it. So, like, uh, it's a, not even the night's room, but, like, now I'm turned off, too. Like, she, like, you know, she drunk, so she here. She, like, yeah, nigga, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, like, wait, wait. nah, so all, if she, if we're she done, said the N-word, you shouldn't have been with her anyway. We're done. We're done. You shouldn't have been with her anyway. <laughs> First off, but she I say it a, all the time. I got a story for you. I had a girlfriend... Keith Hedding told me that joke. I had a girlfriend, <laughs> and she used to get mad because when I loaded the dishwasher, I used to put the knives down. That's she, what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Then you, yeah. He's still, he still hurt by this shit. You heard it? That's what you're supposed to do. No, you I'm still fucked up. He's still, he still, no, I'm not mad. I'm just saying you still hurt by it. You let it go. You was, you was right, Kev. She was wrong. She was wrong. She was wrong. And she's still wrong. How, how many years has been? Uh, 30? <laughs> <laughs> she, she was wrong, Cam. You was right. No, 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 seriously. Like, who loads the dishwasher with the knives up? Nobody. Nobody. She was trying to kill you, Kev, and you got uh, out of that. That was a toxic relationship. And guess what? Guess what else she used to do? What? She used to load the, um, the toilet paper <gasps> under. No, 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 no. Th thank you. No, thank it you. only goes over. It goes over. I don't give. I don't give a fuck what? either okay. way. I'm, I'm the boo boo, the, the toilet paper going in the boo boo anyway. No, I don't man, care how no, it get there. I, I don't care how it get there. If I go to a guy's house and I see that he has the toilet paper and it's under, yes, now, you out. I'm going to change it for him. I'm out. Yeah, yes. that, that doesn't make sense. Why it do don't you, make what, sense. You'd be out. You'd be out. I'm done. So, I mean, I'm petty for a little bit. What I, what I mean to say is that little things will turn me off forever. I can, so attraction to me is like, I can be attracted to someone physically, which is superficial. To me, it's superficial because I'm thinking, um, when I like somebody, I like somebody. I'm like, yo, this person's cool. I was like a new toy. I want to like get yeah. to know, see how I can fit in, how I can fit this into my life. Certain things, I'm like, when you do it, the first thing I think of is, can I deal with this forever? And, and the first thing that happens when I say no, then I'm like, I don't really like you. Like, hey, Blue, you're cool, but I don't really like you. And you got to put the top on the toothpaste, man. Yeah, I don't like that. I ain't real stuff. What's up, bro? Thank you, Nicole. What's up, Doc? Hey, a dentist right there. Yeah, I get you. All right, man. We got a dentist right here, man. Hey, man. You got to put the top on the toothpaste, don't you? Hey, man. You can't now. We ain't doing that, man. We do what we want out here, bro. Can you cover the toothbrush? Please. Yes. Because if I go into somebody's house and the toothbrush is not. What about the toilet paper, though? It got to be over, man. Nah, no, it don't. The, the toilet paper go to the boo-boo anyway. It don't matter which way it get there. It don't matter how it get there. She said it can't be exposed. Thank you. No, I don't, I'm not doing that. Because his toothbrush is out. His toothbrush is out. It's not. It's out. It's not. It's, it's exposed. The thing. I got a whole case for it, like a travel case for it or anything. Yeah. Nah, where do you hold your toothbrush? But a lot of people, but a lot of people keep their toothbrushes. The toilet is in there. I don't care exactly. how Exactly. And when you flush when you that, flush goes, the toilet, it goes everywhere. Nah, my sink and my, my, my toilet's in a separate room for my sink. No, it's in a separate room for, it's in a separate room for my... I'm just saying, I'm just saying at my castle, at my castle, at Casa de, Casa de Blue, my toilet's in a separate room for my sink. We don't do that. We don't keep toilets. It's still floating around. It's still floating around. No, your stuff floating around because you got liquid poo. Nasty. Hey, doctor, man, your man got liquid boo boo, man. He's dude's messed up. <laughs> Dude, dude's messed up. I'm not bragging about that, but I guarantee you your bathroom is not bigger than mine. Uh, and Hold on, you talking about bathrooms, bro? Yes. You talking first? It's the sandals, now it's the bathroom, yo. You just a compare ass dude, bro. I, I, Cut the hair and leave me alone, man. Oh, it's trying to cut our rag on me. You're not my mans. When you flush the we're toilet, we're not in competition. When you flush the I'm toilet, your people. I know. Don't that. worry about how I flush my toilet. Hey, Tell him. She's saying, um, cover your toothbrush. When I get home, I flush my he's toilet. He's saying his bathroom 
I was just saying, she was like, because the toilet's in there with the sink. I was like, actually, my toilet is in a separate room from my sink. That's all I was saying. I was just humble. I was just humble bragging that, you know, my toilet go in a separate room. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying, you know, when you when you living like that, you know what I mean? It's not me. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Hate the game. I ain't put you down there losing. The game did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just outside. Do you wear thumbs? This is he's, this mother, this mother, this dude stay trying to get me, bro. Like stop, man. So they made fun of my sandals for an hour last Friday. So now these are my barbershop shoes. I'm only wearing this at the barbershop. My shoes in the bag. I just I come in here, put on my sandals, and walk around sandals from now. On. That's it. Cause he don't like them. It's the worst dude ever. Anyway, I right, can't say peace out, man. I'm getting out of here. Get on my nerves. No, I'm not saying peace out until you show, show those. I done showed him like six times. Show him again. Nope. Hey, hey, Doc, you're a good dude, man. Your barber's, <laughs> your barber's suck. Because hey, bo his boo-boo going to his bathroom and float around when he flushes. If you need a good dentist, come, come see Doc. Come Check see out. Come, where you at? You can't say upstairs. Nobody knows the address here. There you go. Boom. There we go. Hey, Damn, Jackson. bro, you gonna give it that? <laughs> you turn the camera, you gotta give me the whole thing. Hey, Harry Jackson would have been on it. Harry Jackson wouldn't have messed around. Hey, I'm Harry Jackson, I'm running for school. So I found out, I went to my daughter's school for um, back to school night, and they were giving out stuff for stuff in the area, uh -huh. and they gave me out a pamphlet. Now, there's the Republicans and Democrats in the front of this building. I didn't know that, I just thought there was people doing their thing. And um, they were giving out, and I guess the, I got the Republican card, and Harry Jackson's on the Republican card. I didn't know Harry Jackson was a Republican. Yeah. So now I'm curious about the other things he's doing because typically I don't normally align with the, the goals they have. But I like Harry Jackson. Me and Harry Jackson have mad conversations about bad things and I've never had like a disagreeable, you know what I'm saying? And even when I disagree with him, it's never been like volatile. But these guys, these, these old ladies are about to go to fisticuffs in front of the school. I'm like, y'all know you're in front of a school, right? I was like, they, she was, they was talking to me and they like arguing about who to vote for and inform yourself and this woman did this thing and did this thing. And they were like, no, that's not, that's not true. And I was like, I know my 11-year-old daughter is watching you two old ladies. I was like, listen, this is what happens in the politics, baby. There's Democrats and Republicans. There's mad other parties. But these two parties like the big ones, and they don't get along. See how they can't talk to each other? <laughs> in front of them. I was like, see how they can't talk to each other? This is why I won't get nothing done in America. Because these two people, they're so worried about being right that they start they stop worrying about how they look. And when we walked into school, she was like, that was, that was childish, daddy. That was like third graders. I was like, yeah, two old ladies in front of the school looking like kids. Read your pamphlet. I don't want to read the pamphlet no more because I don't, I don't want to be like, yo, y'all look stupid. I don't want to look stupid. I'd rather not participate because this shit is a turn off. It made me not want to do it with her no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to like go over this stuff. But I do want to talk to Harry Jackson about his stuff. Do you know what he's like, the other things he's doing? I know he talks his talking points in here. But like, you know what other things he's running with? What? Like, what other points he has with his running? I'm going to look him up online. Hey, there goes uh, Jordan right there. Yeah, I'm going to Google this stuff, because that's so weird to me. What's up, brother? Say peace out, Kathy. Peace out, Monty. All right, brother. Thank you for the help today. Appreciate it, love. You're welcome. You're the only reason, we, the only reason I had a show. <laughs> Kevin and everybody else was just doing their own thing. They wasn't trying to do no show. Appreciate you. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you next Friday. Peace out, love. Make sure you share. You guys